It was. It was, uh, it was time to have some fun. I think our guys earned it. You know, this is the last kind of practice before, before you know, the end of the, regu- you know, end of the preseason. And uh, I thought our guys, number one, had a really good practice. And I think, two, just looking back, reflecting on a training camp, uh, I think a job well done by everybody here, coaches, players, staff. And it was that perfect sweet spot to earn, you know, an opportunity to have some fun at the end of practice. And uh, we certainly had some fun there. Yeah, we, you know, there's specific rules that the NFL has put in place as it relates to uh, other, you know, um, you know, <laughs> activities. Um, but today was more about pride. Yeah, we're going to start chasing the game, and then Easton will go the second half. Yes. I think there's uh, a lot in the game that you can evaluate, how they're operating in and out of the huddle, the decisions that they're making when they're under duress. Because even with our first team O-line in there, when you go against a really good front, you're going to have pockets that are like that. So just your decision making, uh, the operation in and out of the huddle, are you seeing the game the right way? Uh, and so I think that's a big factor in it. And then what happens out here at practice? Uh, you know, we've been practicing for about a month now, and we've had a lot of data, you know, tracking all these practices. and feel like you know it's going to give us a full evaluation on these guys but I think uh, I'm just proud of the way that both guys have handled you know this entire training camp the entire off season. I think they've truly made each other better and I know that like I've mentioned before we're really fortunate that we have both guys yeah those guys will get a crack at it for sure um, and so you know we've been training a bunch of guys there uh, to try and get as many looks as possible and um, you know, those guys can definitely do it. And we've, we've tried to get as many guys catches as possible. And in this game, you know, you're hopefully, you know, going to see a bunch of them back there, both kicks and punts. Yeah. Yeah, progressing. I think, you know, his energy's good. He feels like he's getting closer. Um, and so I feel like next week we should be able to get him out there on the practice field and start to get him, you know, his wind, you know, in, a, in more of a practice setting where he's running routes and, um, this week was a, a, a you know a good foundation for him coming back, and it's going to be a big lift for our offense when he comes back. Do you see next week as a positive, not having the fourth preseason game and just kind of getting that rest before week one? I do, Fernando. I think that it's, uh, it's smart by the NFL. Uh, I think, you know, you guys probably heard about getting your team back physically. I think it's a great way to get your team back physically, uh, get ahead on the plan, um, and, and, and still kind of have that healthy Chargers versus Chargers competition too. You don't want to get so ahead on the game plan for Washington that you take, you know, um, your own team for granted. So we'll still be able to compete Chargers on Chargers and start to get uh, ahead on the plan for Washington. I don't think so, Daniel. I think he just he has an AC sprain. Um, his range of motion has really improved uh, since the ball game. Um, and so I think that, you know, from what I understand, he's going to be ready to go game one. Um, and so we'll just see where it goes here with the roster spots and stuff like that. But um, he's not going to play in the game this week. I wanted to make sure that this guy's safe. You know, he, he wants to be out there. He came in, you know, Monday after the game and said, hey, coach, I want to play. And I was like, man, one preseason game is not going to, you know, make a difference in your evaluation. We know how we feel about you. We've been able to see you live now for over a month, and we've seen you in two preseason games. So we have enough of a sample size to make a decision with him. And um, it's more of a, than anything making sure he's safe before he goes out there. And But it's just an AC sprain. And like I said, he's had really good motion the last couple of days. And I think, you know, hopefully we'll be able to get him back here soon. I've, I've enjoyed watching it unfold. I think that uh, from an operations standpoint, I think um, Overton and uh, Ty Long have been exceptional uh, since those guys have kind of gotten into rhythm together so we can get a clean evaluation of the kickers because from an operational standpoint, it's even. Uh, and I think that um, those two have brought the best out in, in one another. I think, you know, Badgley's professionalism, his experience has really rubbed off on, on Tristan, and then Tristan's rubbed off in Mike in, in, in a positive way too um, because he brings something different to the table than Mike does. So I think it pushes – I think they both get pushed in different ways, and I think from a pure production standpoint, I think they both had quality preseasons. It's not like you're making a decision where, like, man, hey, you know, 
one of them's really good and one of them's down here and then there's like this flip-flop every day or hey both of them are down here both really inconsistent you know um, they both had really good camps, you know, and I feel like um, that's going to be a tough decision for us. And and like I told you guys, like it's a complete evaluation. It's it's field goals and kickoff. So, um, you know, we're going to take this down to the end and they're both going to get to kick, uh, uh, you know, this weekend. And we're excited to, to see them finish. We're going to work through that tonight. Uh, we kind of get the, the final you know report from practice today um, and then we'll make those decisions. But you'll know before the game, you know, you'll, you'll know before the game based on, you know, who's warming up um, way before the game, who's playing and who isn't. Just overall in terms of starters that are playing, is it going to be similar to the other teams? Yeah. Yeah, we, we got K-9, uh, the, the action that we wanted in the San Fran game, but it's going to be very similar to the other day, perhaps minus a few guys, a, a few guys, but it's not going to be some wholesale you know, like nobody's out there. We're still gonna we're still gonna compete, um, but there could be a couple more guys that aren't playing um, as opposed to the San Francisco game. Yeah, I, I've t- yeah, you know, we I don't really connect with coaches in that way. Uh, sometimes if they announce it, like in the Rams game, like hey, you know, Sean just says hey, you know, 35 guys aren't playing, so you just take that information for what it is. But um, with Pete, you know, I think that. He, there's a good mix of his guys that haven't been out there. I think they're treating it a little bit similar to us. Um, you know, I, I know Russ and like Jamal and stuff like that. Like they haven't played Bobby, um, so I think it, it's more similar to how we've approached it, where the guys who need the work are getting it, and the guys that don't um, are resting. So I think it'll be similar in this last game. But I know that what we're going to do is we're going to have a game plan that gives those guys in this last game a chance to compete. It's really important to us. Um, and uh, we're excited to go compete um, on on Saturday night. In terms of the kicker, will it be by situation or by half? Probably, Joe, probably, to be honest, probably a little bit of both in this game because we want to get both guys some cracks at it. So, um, you know, we're going to flip-flop the who starts the game. Um, so Tristan will start the game this time. Um, Badge will come through second um, and try and get him as many ops and situationally maybe manage it a little bit differently where, hey, we want to see these guys kick, you know, and try and put them as many, you know, uh, kicking situations as possible uh, to get them some live looks. I think it plays a component in it. Uh, Again, I think that you have to take all the context that you have, all the data that you have, and and you know use all of it to your advantage to make a good decision. And and so um, you know in the course of JJ, I've really liked how um, he's responded to that that groin setback. I mean, he he's really attacked this rehab. You know, from what I understand, better than he ever has. He's he's back sooner than he ever has. Um, and and that to me is a great sign. You know, he's responded a, a lot better. Um, and so I know that his spirits are high. And I know that he's an asset for our football team, you know, and so I know that, uh, you know, before he was injured, you know, he was having an outstanding camp as a runner, receiver, and on special teams for us. So, um, you know, I think that all I can go by, it, Joe, to, 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 you know, further answer your question is how they've responded since I've been here, you know, because what happened before, I wasn't here for a lot of that. What's happened in front of my own two eyes and in front of our eyes as a staff, that's what we're going to take the fo- most into the evaluation process, and I really like what Justin's done for us. There's something about spring training fitting. Um, what you've seen from him over through the course of training camp? I know today he's working, he's working with your trainers, but do you expect him to be ready for you? Or yeah, he's, just, he's got some knee soreness, um, and we're just trying to be careful with him. He's had a good camp. I think that, um, as you guys have heard me say, this guy looks like a pro player. Um, I know that he can do the jobs that we drafted him to do. Um, and so we're really excited about his potential. Um, and so I think that you've seen glimpses of it throughout camp. Uh, like most of these guys, consistency and performance is, is going to be a big factor in, in his long-term success. But I know we really like coaching him. He's tough. Um, and now, you know, we just want to make sure that, uh, you know, he's healthy. And so we gave him a day here to, to you know, to rest. Yeah. Yeah, it's been good to get him back, Daniel, because I mean, number one, that that's a pretty thin edge group right now, and then he gives a lot in our special teams. I know that he does a lot of those, you know, big skill jobs that that you need. Uh, so it's been really good to get him back. Um, he looks healthy. 
and you know I know he's not 100 percent, but he's but he's healthy enough to play and compete. And uh, we're excited to let him go play a full game this weekend, so that we can, you know, judge him fully. The overall of everything, uh, are, do you feel like you guys were on schedule, or do you wanted to be as a team going into this last final preseason game? Yeah, I like the way you said that. I, I do feel like we're on schedule as a team because I've, I know that we've become a team. I know that in all three phases of the game that people know how we want to play. Every player and coach knows exactly how we want to play in those three phases. Um, they know how we want to meet. They know how we want to practice and prepare and train. And, and I feel that full investment. I see that full investment. And I think that that's a big goal in training camp is you're laying that foundation of your team. And we've been able to measure ourselves against other people, which has been fantastic. Um, and then we've been able to measure ourselves against one another. And when you have quality football players on your team, you create that competition that you're hoping really makes everybody better. And I feel like all that's happened on this practice field, that competition right, has happened in every single day. And that's really what I wanted. And I feel like we're, we're right on course, like you said. Daniel, I think it's an awesome point, and I'm aware of um, all the things that you guys mentioned, you know, before, you know, I, I came here. I think the validation comes from the players. You know, I think when you talk to them, when you interview them, I think they're the validation, you know, and th they can tell you um, about how we're doing things, and, um, you know, and I think that they're the validation that I'm looking for. Um, I think our camp, you know, is a validation. I, I know that I'm very pleased, but... Uh, I'm very happy because I know that they're in a good place and I know that they're fully invested in what we're doing and how we're doing it and that's a big component of it you know is getting your team healthy to the first game and doing the best you can knowing that it's impossible to keep your team fully healthy but I think what our players know is that everybody here is fully invested in them being as good as they can be and that I think our players are very confident in that and that was a big goal of mine coming here because I'm aware of what what it's been like here in the past. Yeah, there aren't very many players like him in the league um, on any side of the ball. There, there aren't many players like Derwin James because you've got rare talent, rare talent, rare size, speed, um, critical factors for the position. He's got rare skills for the position. He can do anything on the field, um, play anywhere, um, and he's your signal caller. And I'm not aware of any other DBs in the league that are the signal caller. And you can make a case that he's the leader on our entire football team um, and, like, you know, the face of your football team, um, and certainly one of them. So uh, I, I haven't been around too many guys like that, um, regardless of the position. You know, normally it's quarterbacks. Um, Derwin's one of the few defensive players um, that I'm aware of in the league that can carry that mantle. Yeah, J J JG, um, we got him wrapped up the other day. He was kind of in routes on air and just felt a little tight um, and played a really good game against San Fran, um, had a nice return, and just being careful with him because he's had an outstanding camp. And I think because of that cumulative effect of some other wideouts going down, we just wanted to make sure that he was, you know, feeling good because, you know, we kind of had that string of, like, Joe Reed and Mike and some other guys, and we just wanted to make sure that we were careful with him um, before, you know, the game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, KJ just uh, at the end of the ball game, he kind of had like a like a tweak on you know on that slant route he caught guys on third down towards the end of the game. He just kind of felt a little something there, and so um, again, more just being careful with him, um, not a concern long term, but just making sure you know he he played a hard fought game and was returning for us and just being careful with him. Yeah closer, you know, closer, uh, improving. Uh, I, I know his ankle is it, the swelling way down, mobility, range of motion much better, and um, I know that he's feeling close to getting back. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's a good question. Um, like I said, it, it's a case-by-case -case basis. I think it's a, it's a great question. Um, I think where we're at with our front depth, um, you know, we just, that position is such a physical position. And 
it's such an attrition position and I feel like Jerry's had just a phenomenal camp and um, we're just we don't have the same depth there that we have you know in the secondary and so I think the depth plays a, a factor in that um, for sure um, and and I think that Vato understands that um, and I think that um, Va- there's an element of how we play that's a little bit different than how they played before in the secondary where we wanted Mike to be out there functioning the way we play um, and knowing that we needed him to because we were down some secondary guys. Um, and so um, it was good to get him that quarter uh, of work. And, you know, and I appreciate these guys because we told these guys we were very transparent about being like case by case and telling them exactly why we're doing everything we're doing. And, um, you know, I think Vato is a guy, he's an example of a guy benefiting from going out there, just like Kenneth Murray, just getting a quarter of work. Um, and, and, and we needed that. We needed that for those two guys. And, and I think for Jerry, um, his circumstance just a little bit different because of our D-line depth. Oh, change your mind, Haley. Such a, I think it's such an important question. I don't think change your mind may be the right way of looking at it, but confirming what's in your mind, I think. Confirming what's in it, I think people can do that one way or the other. Um, and, and so uh, I, think, um, it just, I think it's another chance. Anytime you get a chance to compete, um, I think you get to represent who you are. And, and I think that um, what we're trying to do is, is, is give our guys a game plan where if there are some questions that we have, that we're able to get them answered. Um, and that's why, like, when we put in the plan for this preseason game, a lot of it is just getting the guys in the right seat so we can get that final evaluation. All right, hey, let's run a couple plays for these guys to see how they do. Hey, on defense, let's, hey, put these guys in some tough positions defensively to see them cover or see them rush, you know. And, and if we're having to make a couple, you know, tough decisions, like, let's just one more one more shot at it and um, in the return game. Um and kickers you know so just that last that last part of it so that we can feel good about what we already think oh joe <laughs> man um you know there's i mean it, i think it's going to be tough on us because i think there's just an, we have enough depth at some positions where you're going to have to make difficult decisions which is a good thing for your organization uh so I'm proud of the way our guys have competed and that they've made it really tough on us and and that that competition has been really healthy. Uh, and, you know, I think no matter what happens, we're going to be really proud of the way we organize this camp. I mean, I guess in a difference of quarterbacks, two versus three, you'd like to have that experience and mentor in all three in a well-balanced group. But how do you evaluate maybe the needs of other positions closer? Yeah. I think it's an important point, too. I think what you have to do is try to put the very best 53, the combination of 53 guys, not the most talented 53, but the best 53, the right 53. And I think that that math can happen a lot of different ways um, because I think, um, as you guys know, there's a lot of different models um, out there. And so I think what we try to do is just say, who are the right 53 guys for this team? And then knowing that it can change. It's not just the 53 for the season. I mean – hey, there's a lot that changes in the NFL. Um, and so, um, you know, uh, th- what, a, what a, four years ago? Four years ago, Khalil Mack wasn't even on the Chicago Bears yet. He wasn't even on the team yet. So, I mean, there's a lot that can happen in the NFL, you know? So um, I think that, you know, from a 53 standpoint, I know me, Tom, you know, the Spanos family, we, you know, we believe in putting the right 53 together. And however that shakes out, I know that we'll be proud of it and knowing that it's ongoing throughout the season because it's a long season. Well, I think normally, normally, you know, you go with nine, especially with the new rules. You know, if you go with nine, you're looking for, you know, a swing inside guy and a swing outside guy, and then you're looking for a guy that can play center. And I think that we have that. Um, I think that, you know, Brendan certainly um, can play multiple positions. I think Quiz can play any of the interior positions. I think we have enough flex at tackle with Storm, Trey, um, you know, Ryan Hoffman, um, Tyrese kicked out there. Um, you know, I just think that, 
um, we've been able to kind of duke that out. And, and, and Frank and Sean and Joe have done a really good job of getting those guys looks out there at those, you know, multiple, multiple positions, like you said. And I feel confident going into this that, you know, our offensive line is going to be able to move if it has to um, based on injuries and stuff.